Coach Garner here from HockeyTraining.com, and in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly how you're going to lose fat in the best way possible to optimize your hockey performance and minimize any of the associated risks that often come with fat loss diets. You see, when it comes to fat loss, you can't defy the law of energy balance, okay? Energy balance representing your calorie balance or your calories in versus calories out. In four plus decades, we have never seen once in the scientific literature that that theory has been disproven. If you want to regulate your body weight, you need to regulate your calories. Something that you can always think about in terms of food quantity as well as uh, quality is that calories are going to regulate your body weight. The macronutrients you choose, which is your proteins, fats, and carbs, are going to determine what you look like at that body weight. But the micronutrients that you consume, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, are going to determine what you feel like at that body weight. Got it? Calories determine total body weight. Macronutrients determine what you're going to look like at that body weight. And micronutrients determine what you're going to feel like at that body weight. So it's not just about quantity, it is also about quality. That marriage is what's gonna get you the best possible result so that you can create the body you want with the performance that you want at the exact same time. So we need to address energy balance and we're gonna do it in a conservative way, okay? There's a real nutrition expert out there named Lyle McDonald. He's been in the industry for a very long time and he made the excellent assessment based on a ton of data that your body weight in pounds times 15 is an excellent measure of what would be considered your maintenance calorie intake, meaning your calories in versus your calories out are equal, so therefore you are going to maintain your body weight, okay? This is 15 calories per pound of body weight, and that's body weight. So regardless of muscle mass to fat ratio, one pound in 15 calories is an excellent estimate for what would be considered your basal metabolic rate or what essentially the amount of calories you're gonna burn on a day-to-day -day basis without doing anything else. So considered your maintenance intake. What we're going to do is only go one point less than that. Body weight times 14. This is gonna induce what's known as a hypocaloric state or a state where calories in are less than calories out. So therefore you are going to induce the fat loss process. But Coach Garner, uh, that seems like such a small deficit. I can probably do body weight times 10 and lose five, 10 pounds a week instead. This is the biggest mistake that hockey players make, okay? As an athlete, you have a very extreme mindset. And although I love that in you, I, as the coach, need to pull the reins back because sometimes what you can do isn't the best thing for you to do. Let me give you an analogy that represents something known as metabolic adaptation, okay? Let's say you've got a bank account and you've got a credit card. If you have a credit card and I steal your credit card and I take 50 cents out per week, each and every single week, you probably won't even notice it. It's just 50 cents, you probably won't even see that at all. However, if I steal your credit card and on the very first week I make a $5,000 purchase, you're gonna say, hold on a second, I'm gonna call the security center, freeze that credit card because something bad is going on. This is exactly what your body does when you induce too hard of what's known as a caloric deficit too soon. So if you go from maintenance eating, which most people are at when they want to start a fat loss phase, they will go from maintenance, go into a steep calorie deficit. The body actually triggers security system because based on evolutionary biology, if you suddenly are eating way less calories than you previously were, your body thinks it's in a state of famine. It thinks, hang on, we need to get into preservation mode. I am going to intentionally lower your metabolism and your energy expenditure on a daily basis so that you hold on to this body fat because I don't know when the next meal is coming. You suddenly just dropped your calories all of a sudden and my survival mechanisms are kicking in so that you live to see another day. That's what evolutionary biology is. Your body, whether we like it or not, 
doesn't care how many goals you score this season. Your body's prime concern 100% of the time is survival. So what we need to do is coax the body into fat loss rather than force the body into fat loss. One thing I want you to always remember is that if you coax the body, it will respond. If you force the body, it will react. If you do too deep of a calorie deficit too soon, your body has a lot of biological mechanisms to ensure you do not lose body fat. Your metabolism is regulated by many things, levels of and sensitivity to certain hormones such as leptin, testosterone, estrogen, your thyroid hormones, many things are all at work that determine our energy expenditure or our calories outside of the equation. This will all be turned down dramatically if you do too quick of a calorie deficit too soon. Not to mention, if you do too quick of a calorie deficit too soon, what else do you think will happen? Probably lose a lot of muscle mass right away because crash diets never lead to great physiques. And number two, if you do too big of a calorie deficit too soon, your recovery capacity will absolutely suffer. So instead of burning body fat off, which is what you should be doing, you'll be starving body fat off, which is what you absolutely shouldn't be doing. No hockey player ever starved their way to a better performance, but many have burned their way into a better performance. So what you and I are gonna do to make sure you get a six pack without affecting your recovery, your current hormonal state, or the preservation of your muscle mass during this caloric deficit is we are going to be conservative. That is the smartest way to do it so that you lose pure body fat as opposed to some ratio of body fat and muscle mass along the way. We're gonna start at body weight times 14, and what you're going to be seeking is a weight loss of a half a pound to one pound per week, or two pounds to four pounds per month. If you do a monthly weigh-in or a weekly weigh-in, the math is the exact same. You're seeking this conservative loss because when you go a half a pound to one pound per week, that's like me taking 50 cents out of your credit card each and every single week. I, we are losing body fat over here while our metabolism is looking over here. But if I lose 10 pounds in the first week, my metabolism is going to turn around and be like, hey, shut everything down. Just like the security systems that you had for your credit card, your body's going to have those security systems in place so that you stop losing body fat. So people think, I don't want to be that conservative. Conservative is a beautiful thing. You're going to maintain your muscle, you're going to maintain your recovery capacity, and you're going to be able to continue to train hard because you're still taking out enough calories to burn fat rather than lose fat, but you're also avoiding one of the biggest positives of this. You're avoiding that metabolic adaptation. Your metabolism will adapt to the amount of calories that you consume. The fastest way to run into a fat loss plateau is to crash diet too quick, too soon. So we're gonna go body weight times 14. We're gonna seek half a pound to one pound loss per week. And then what happens when we run into a plateau? Body weight times 13, cool. You run into a plateau again, body weight times 12. You run into a plateau again, body weight times 11. By the time you get to body weight times 10, you are absolutely shredded, beyond, beyond shredded. You will not need, it, provided you are on a proper hockey training program, you will absolutely be bone shredded by the time you get to body weight times 10. But you have to start at body weight times 14, okay? Work your way there. Because if you go straight there, you're gonna lose rather than win, okay? So that's how we're gonna set up your energy balance because that's the number one regulator of body weight. If this isn't in check, None of this crap matters because you could have the best supplements in the world. You could eat only organic food and you could be on the best training program in the world. But if you're taking in more calories than you're expending on a daily basis, you're not going to lose an ounce of body fat. It doesn't matter. The laws of thermodynamics don't care how much you wanted to lose body fat if you take in too much energy. These are physics laws, not mine. So we correct this first. Then we move into macronutrients, okay? What are we gonna do with macronutrients? Well, we're gonna set protein at one and a half grams per pound of body weight. But Coach Garner, last week I saw your weight gain video and for muscle building, you only recommended one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Why for fat loss are we having one and a half grams per pound of body weight? I thought if I wanted to build muscle, I should have more protein. And if I wanted to lose fat, I could, I could back off of it. 
Wrong, okay? Huge myth. It's the reverse. If you want to drop body fat, you actually want to increase protein. But if you want to gain muscle mass, you actually are better off reducing protein. Now, why would that be? Well, there is a ton of reasons that we could go into in future videos regarding this. But first off, when it comes to high protein in a fat loss phase, you actually want more protein in a fat loss phase to act as a muscle preservation insurance, okay? We're increasing protein intake to guarantee that we don't lose muscle mass while we're in a calorie deficit. That's a huge thing that we want to avoid. When you are building muscle, you can get away with less protein because the pure amount of calories you're consuming in a bulking phase, it's impossible to lose muscle. You're never gonna lose muscle in an energy surplus. It'll never happen, okay? But in an energy deficit, you can absolutely lose muscle. So we actually wanna drive protein up to provide more of what's known as anti-catabolic activity. Catabolism means muscle tissue breakdown. Protein is anti-catabolic. So we want as much protein as we can get in the body to preserve muscle mass, even though we're losing body weight. What's another reason why I would want more protein in a fat loss phase? Well, when you understand your nutritional biochemistry, you find out very quickly that there's something known as the satiety index. Satiety represents feelings of fullness. There is nothing that provides you more satiety in the entire nutrition world than protein intake. So not only will a high protein intake allow you to preserve muscle more efficiently in a calorie deficit, but a high protein intake will actually make it feel like you're not dieting because your satiety is still high, okay? You are getting more feelings of fullness per unit of food coming in the body than you otherwise would have. For example, if you have 100 calories of chicken breast versus 100 calories of white rice, the chicken breast is gonna provide more satiety, so it's gonna leave you feeling more satisfied for a longer period of time, which fights things such as cravings, wanting your cheat meal, falling off the plan, going to bed hungry. We don't want any of that stuff. So we drive protein up for those reasons and many more reasons we can get into in future videos. Next up is fat. Fat is gonna be taken at 25% of your total caloric intake. Fat, in terms of intake for hockey players, I keep it at 25% for both fat loss and muscle building. Why? Because fat provides a lot of the health benefits for the body. Fat plays a huge role in inflammation management of your body, plays a huge role in hormone balance and hormone creation in the body. Your omega-3 ratio to omega-6 ratio plays a big role in your body fat loss and muscle mass gain. Fats provide a lot of lubrication for joints. There's so many things that fats do. I mean, our brain is 40% fat. So we, hey, we need fats for a lot of essential survival purposes and essential health purposes. But in terms of a fuel source for hockey specific activity, it's actually not a very good fuel source. So we want enough fats to provide all of those health benefits and to balance out our blood sugar throughout the day so we have even keeled energy on a day-to-day -day basis, but not too much fat because we wanna have enough carbohydrates in our diet on a day-to-day -day basis because hockey is a glycolytic sport, meaning the prime energy source that you're using in your dry land training and out in the ice is carb dominant. So we wanna have enough carbs to supply the fuel we need for performance and to restock that fuel for the purposes of recovery. So we're having our protein at one and a half grams per pound. We are having our fat at 25% of wherever we're at in terms of our energy balance calculation and carbs simply make up the rest, all right? What can you use for tips and tricks for optimal fat loss? Well, density is a big one, okay? This is where you actually want more volume in your food. So for example, uh, oatmeal is a very good option to get more volume. Oatmeal can, uh, absorbs a lot of water when cooking it, whereas other carb sources do not. If you were to have a dry carb source um, or one that doesn't hold a lot of water, like pasta, for example, to have 60 grams of carbs of white pasta versus to have 60 grams of carbs from oatmeal, that's a full cup of oatmeal measured dry. 
then you gotta add water to it. It's gonna double in size. That is a huge volume of food in your gut. And one of the prime satiety signals that is actually, there's a stretching. It, it's, there's a chemical reaction that occurs when your stomach literally stretches. When it stretches, it sends signals of satiety to the brain that say, hey dude, the stomach's full right now. So we don't wanna consume any more food. What's interesting about this is that you can have that stretching effect in the stomach create sati uh, signals of satiety to the brain regardless of the caloric density of that food. Meaning, if you had a stretch effect from 1,000 calories or a stretch effect from 100 calories, you're gonna get that satiety signal. So it's beneficial in the world of fat loss to have high volume foods with very low calories. A good example of this is actually watermelon. Watermelon is a great fat loss food because you can have four ounces of watermelon, which is quite a bit. It's seven carbs. So you're talking about like a fist sized serving of watermelon being seven carbs. If you had a fist sized serving of white rice, that's at least 50 carbs. You know, you're talking about one cup. So you can have seven carbs or 50 carbs. They're both carb sources. So with the watermelon, you're able to eat so much more, but not take in a bunch of calories. So consider the density of what you're consuming. Another good example is you could add a tablespoon of olive oil to your meal, or you could have half an avocado. They have the exact same amount of, fat, of healthy fat intake, both health foods, but the avocado it contains way more volume than a tiny little tablespoon of olive oil. So you tell me, you know, would you rather sit down to a big meal and still drop body fat? Or would you rather sit down to a little meal and still drop body fat? I know what option I would choose. Density is a big deal when it comes to remaining adherent and satisfied on a fat loss program. Next is your composition. The composition of the food essentially is what food options you're choosing to get the job done. We've already talked about white rice and oatmeal in this video, so why don't we just talk about them again? If you wanna have a, uh, 40 grams of carbs from white rice, you're gonna get zero fiber. If you wanna get 40 grams of carbs from oatmeal, you're gonna get a ton of fiber. Remember when I said previously that protein is the number one food that provides satiety inside our body and brain? Fiber is the number two food. So if you can get a lot of fiber in your carb choices, particularly it's just an easy vehicle for it, then for the exact same amount of calories, you're gonna get way more satiety. So if I had 100 calories of uh, carbohydrates from white rice versus 100 calories of carbohydrates from oatmeal, the oatmeal is gonna keep me fuller for much longer. I'm still getting my carbs in, I'm still getting the job done, I'm still following my energy balance and my macronutrient goals, but I'm psychologically more comfortable on the diet. And that's the thing, right? A lot of people don't fail fat loss diets because they hate the foods. They fail fat loss diets because they're hungry. So when you can manage hunger, then you can manage cravings. And if you can manage cravings, then you can manage your success on a fat loss diet. So think about the composition of your food. Instead of having a cup of white rice, consume the same amount of carbs from oatmeal. Instead of having a cup of pasta, consume the same amount of carbs from apples. There's a whole lot of options that you can do here, considering density and composition, that allow you to be way more adherent in the long run to your plan. Another option for composition as well, something that I personally like to do for uh, an easier time with fat loss, is that I'll actually convert my post-workout shake into a meal. So oftentimes I'll recommend post game and post workout to have one gram of carbohydrate per kilo of body weight and half a gram of protein per kilo of body weight immediately post game, whey protein isolate and a carbohydrate powder. If you're in a fat loss phase, I'm totally cool with you switching that to say chicken breast and sweet potato because to consume half a gram of protein per kilo of body weight and one gram of carbohydrates per kilo of body weight in powder form, I can literally drink that in 30 seconds and then be ready for a meal in 60 minutes. No problem, easy. But if I had to do that with chicken breast and sweet potato, that's an enormous meal, an enormous meal to consume. Yet, it doesn't contain more calories. So I'm gonna be way more satisfied from it. 
It's just a cool, sneaky way that you can continue your fat loss goals and get the right nutrients in at the right time, but use a different vehicle to do so so that you can, uh, I, 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 I guess what I'm saying here is prioritize satiety so that you can prioritize your psychology because normally it's up here why we fail uh, diet plans and not down here, all right? Moving on, we have reward. Reward is something that you can use both ways. You wanna eat foods you like if you wanna consume more of them on a bulking plan, but if you're on a fat loss plan, it doesn't sound that great, but you can choose foods that are more bland, that are more boring. Do you think it's, a, it's a, just a wild thing that bodybuilders consume chicken breast and broccoli when doing their contest diets? Do you think it's just a wild thing that they have plain egg whites with plain oatmeal for breakfast in their contest diets? Yeah, it's not a wild thing. You know, it, it sounds crazy, but you can choose more bland foods so that you get less reward from them so that you're more full from them. Okay, here's another example. You could have um, one scoop, like for example, protein powder. A lot of protein powder is actually delicious. And I could have 30 grams of protein powder before bed. Great pre-bed snack, good for recovery, right? Well, one cup of cottage cheese is also 30 grams of protein. Which one do you think you're gonna be more full from? One cup of cottage cheese is gonna be way more satisfying and is gonna keep you fuller longer and allow you to go to bed on a full stomach even though it's not gonna have more calories than the protein shake. The reward value is big here. So if you're trying to diet, on McDonald's, on candy, like, oh, I was able to fit this candy into my macros. Oh, I was able to fit this favorite food into my macros, so it's fine. It's fine physiologically, but it's a slippery slope psychologically. Because once you open the gate to absolutely delicious things, we all know what happens after that, right? It's like everybody, well, I'm just gonna have one bite of chips. How many people have succeeded at that? Not many. So when you consider reward as intentionally not consuming the most delicious food so that you can accomplish a given goal, I personally use that. Now, admittedly, I'm a bit of a meathead. I will eat whatever it takes in order to accomplish a goal. I don't set a goal that I don't intend on achieving, period. So lots of times I'll look at food as simply a functional vehicle that I can use in order to get the job done. Not every meal has to be an absolute delicious snack that, that I absolutely love and enjoy, you know? That's sometimes some of the questions that bother me the most when I'm doing Q and A's and stuff. Hey, you know, I don't like this pre-workout. Is there something else? But come on, you're drinking it literally for 30 seconds. You can't, you can't consume that for 30 seconds, even though it's scientifically proven to help you with your goals. If that, I don't want cottage cheese before bed. Is there something else? Look, you can have whatever you want, but I'm gonna tell you what's optimal. And so if, if, if you can't have something for 30 seconds, even though it's gonna help you achieve your goals, then I don't really know what to tell you, all right? Consider reward. Last but not least, one thing I like to do is an even evening distribution. So once I have my calories and my macronutrients set, what are my two biggest meals of the day gonna be? Post-workout and before bed. Post-workout to maximize recovery, before bed so that I don't cheat, <laughs> all right? What, when does everybody fall off their plan? It's when they're watching Netflix at night. That's like when the chips get pulled out, when the Cheetos get pulled out, when the drinks get pulled out. Typically, everybody gets the most cravings and has the least amount of willpower at the end of the day. So what I like to do is distribute my calories, the greatest post-workout and the greatest before bed, because I'm doing it post-workout, obviously, so I can maximize muscle mass and recover, but I'm doing it before bed so that I have so much food in my stomach that I actually don't even wanna cheat. I don't have cravings because I've got this giant plate of food in front of me that I gotta demolish before I go to sleep. So consider an evening distribution because it's not, when it comes to fat loss, it's not when you eat things. It's how much of it you eat, okay? Nutrient timing does matter, but your total caloric intake in the day determines whether or not you're in a deficit or not. So I like to distribute calories to certain points of the day to maximize my personal preference so that I can be more adherent to the fat loss program that I'm currently on. 
For me, and what I would recommend for you as well, is that your biggest meals are post-workout and before bed. Post-workout, so you can do all the performance stuff that we already talked about and we already know, but before bed to keep you in check when your willpower is at its absolute lowest. All right? This protocol is how you're gonna lose pure body fat and not lose muscle mass along the way. And this protocol is what's gonna allow you to also maintain your results by the time you get there. Because when you start at 14 and then 13 and then 12 and then 11, when you start working your way down, it's not a one month crash diet. So what you are doing is teaching yourself the habits, the skills, the meal prepping, the food choices, what works for your satiety. And you're, you're teaching yourself all of these things along the way so that you don't just have an extreme method for fat loss, but instead you have a maintainable method for fat loss. This allows you to maintain your results and ultimately that's what it's all about. You didn't do all this work to get completely shredded only to throw it all away the moment you're done that diet. You learn the habits and tricks and tips that you need to maintain those results so that you can dominate out in the ice. Use this protocol and you're absolutely gonna crush it. Thanks so much for watching. As always, like and subscribe the video and let me know in the comments section any questions you have about this and what video you'd like to see next. Let's go.